Today, we're talking Caleb Williams, so let's first start with his strengths. The obvious thing that everyone knows about Caleb Williams is that he's a playmaker, but what makes him so good at creating big plays is his unique combination of arm strength, ability to throw off platform, athleticism, quick decision making, and pocket presence. Let's take a look at each of these one by one. First, we have arm strength. From the moment he takes his first NFL snap, Caleb Williams will have one of the 5 to 10 best arms in the NFL. You think I'm over-exaggerating? Well, in the words of Cam Newton, watch this. On this throw, Caleb delivers this ball perfectly in the basket to his wide receiver from his own 14-yard line to the opposite 20-yard line, which is 66 air yards. Only four active NFL quarterbacks have thrown a pass that far. Pat Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Justin Herbert, and Josh Allen. This pass doesn't even require any adjustment from the receiver. It's a perfect dime thrown after moving the launch point. But as I mentioned in my Drake May scouting report, arm strength isn't just nice for being able to throw deep. It's also important for two other reasons. First, it allows him to zip the ball into tight windows, thus giving him more leeway to be late on throws. And second, unlike quarterbacks with lesser arm strength, it allows him to hit throws as he sees them come open without having to reset his feet, meaning he could chuck the ball downfield while running, off balance, or throwing off his back foot. For example, on this play, Williams keeps his eyes downfield while feeling the pocket start collapsing in on him, so he steps up into the pocket. Spending any extra time here to stop and reset his feet to get a good base to throw compromises his ability to throw because he has the defender closing in from his side. So instead, he just plants and drives this ball off one leg deep downfield from his own 21-yard line to the opposing 28-yard line, which is a 50-yard bomb off one leg while on the run. And again, this is a perfect throw, right in the bucket, no adjustment needed from the receiver. In general, Williams just shows a consistent ability to throw accurately off-platform, on the run, and from different arm angles, while varying up his speed to throw lasers into tight windows, or to put some beautiful touch on throws, depending on what the situation calls for. He also shows great awareness to change his arm angle, to get the ball around defenders on screen plays, and passes into the flat, delivering the ball accurately both sidearm and even underhand and even changing his arm angle to avoid batted passes by fitting the ball in between defensive linemen. His ability to do all of this, throw off platform, throw from different arm angles, and to throw accurately and with strength while doing so, paired with his other traits that we're about to discuss, increases the margin of error for himself, his play callers, and all the other players on his team, giving them a higher floor as an offense and allowing them to create something out of nothing when nothing is there. Which leads me to my next couple points. Caleb's athleticism, pocket presence, and decisiveness. Caleb Williams is a fantastic athlete in a number of ways. He has the acceleration to quickly burst out of the pocket and pass defenders, incredible balance to stay standing through sack attempts and run through arm tackles, and the lateral agility to make defenders miss in space and in the backfield to buy time for his receivers downfield. When paired with his elite arm strength and ability to throw off platform, his athleticism can make the wrong play right or just avoid negative plays. Here, Caleb demonstrates an excellent job playing in structure from the start of the play. He sees his first read is blanketed over the top by the safety and the linebackers underneath, making this a dangerous throw. He quickly moves to his second and third read, quickly turning down the second after seeing the linebacker prime to jump this route, and turning down the third after seeing the linebacker carrying the seam. He then works back to the opposite side of the field, but is under pressure. While keeping his eyes up, he avoids the pressure with no wasted movement backpedaling until he absolutely has to step back up, and then accelerating into the open portion of the field created by the defender's absence. He again keeps his eyes up and sees the linebacker pursuing, ready to come light him up. He holds the ball one extra tick so the linebacker can't get his hands on it and delivers this in between the two defenders on a rope to his receiver in the scramble drill. It maybe looks like chaos, but Caleb is in control the entire play. Here, you probably want him to at least consider hitting this out route, but at the time he's looking at it, he's likely worried the linebacker's going to carry this horizontally and try to undercut the ball, so he moves off the read. Did he maybe move off it a little too quickly? In my opinion, yes, but you also don't expect the linebacker to come to a complete stop like he did after Caleb moved to his next read. Caleb moves through his other reads and then steps up in the pocket while continuing to shuffle through his receivers with his eyes to find an open one. He breaks this defender's ankles and continues to roll out and sees number two working back to him and he just delivers a strike with an absolutely awful base. But as you can see, the wide receiver doesn't even have to move. It's a perfect throw. I think you get the idea of what I'm going for. And if you weren't sold on his athleticism, just look at this play where he displays excellent acceleration and lateral agility and again pairs it with ability to throw off platform. His athleticism also makes him a threat in the rushing game where he can run read options or just scramble when nothing is there to create more yards and even score. 
but athleticism to evade defenders in the backfield is nothing without good pocket presence, which is comprised of two related concepts, which are A, pocket feel, and B, pocket movement. Pocket feel refers to the ability of the quarterback to feel how the pocket is developing, while pocket movement refers to the ability of the quarterback to move, avoid the rush in the least amount of steps while keeping his eyes downfield, and not compromise his ability to throw. Caleb Williams again excels in this area, as he has that eyes in the back of his head type trait like Mahomes, where he always seems to know where the defenders are coming and is always able to avoid them while keeping his eyes downfield. I've already shown you a lot of the plays that best demonstrate this trait, but here's another one for good measure. Caleb is not too quick to bail from a clean pocket, standing in while going through his progressions, while subtly moving his feet to create the most space for himself to throw. He starts to back up as he sees the linebacker start moving downfield, lessening the space between them, and sees that there's a giant gap that the linebacker can shoot into. As he does this, the left tackle gives up his block, so Caleb will shoot out to the side and fire this laser in for a touchdown. He does all of these movements while keeping his eyes downfield and adjusting subtly to all the different defenders. As 14 caves in the right side of the pocket slightly, he slightly shifts to the left. As the linebacker slightly moves closer, he moves slightly further. And as the edge gets past the left tackle, he takes off into the open field, straddling the line of scrimmage so he can still throw. Which brings me to another point, which is that Caleb moves to throw, not to run. And he displays excellent ability to move in the pocket and then reset himself to throw. I don't really like seeing quarterbacks who take off every time they're moved off their spot, because it's going to happen a lot in the NFL. Quarterbacks need to be able to sense the pressure, step up, reset their feet, and just deliver the ball to the receiver. Caleb is close to exactly what you want to see from a prospect in this regard, as he consistently steps up in tight pockets and will deliver, or he'll scramble to the sides to keep the play alive and make plays in the scramble drill. In terms of his last strength, I want to talk about his quick decision making and his processing in general. Williams shows the consistent ability to make full field reads and to pull the trigger on the ball the moment he sees it without hesitation. But quick decision making doesn't just refer to his ability to see and throw, but also his ability to go through his progressions and decide whether he should stay on his current read, and if so, for how long, whether he should move to his next read, and when he should throw. Here, Williams looks at his first read and sees that the safety is blanketing over the top which means he knows the middle of the field is open. So he quickly moves over to his second read, confirms what he thought he'd likely see once he moved off number one, and pulls the trigger immediately, dropping in a dime to the wide receiver with no hesitation. This next one is an NFL level play. You can clearly see him going through full field reads, moving from his first to his second to his third, and even to his fourth read on the backside, which is something many college quarterbacks struggle to do. He steps up and resets himself in the pocket while under pressure and keeps his eyes downfield. He's quick and decisive and delivers a ball into the intermediate field to his wide receiver. No scrambling, no off-platform throws. This is your bread and butter as an NFL quarterback and he proves he can do it. Like this play is just immaculate. From his quick movement off reads to his movement in the pocket and good base. Everyone thinks this guy is just a playmaker, but why he's so great as a playmaker is his ability to kill defenses from the pocket too. I haven't been scouting super long, but I haven't seen a college quarterback yet read the entire field and work through their progressions as methodically as Caleb Williams and do it as often. I also haven't seen a quarterback who has as quick of a trigger to just get the ball to his man as soon as he sees him open. But for all you pessimists out there, let's now talk weaknesses. By far the biggest qualm you'll see about Caleb Williams is a belief that he can't play in structure. I'm going to tell you straight up that I think this is severely overblown by people, but it is still a legitimate concern in that I would describe it as more of an inconsistent ability to play in structure. I'd actually say he plays in structure far more than you think, and if you genuinely sit down and watch his tape, you'll see plenty of design plays where he sits in the pocket, and delivers a completion to his second or third read, and there's no Superman type of football being played. But I also think that one's opinion on this is in the eye of the beholder, because I could find you double digit amounts of plays on both sides of the spectrum to convince you that he is either good or bad in structure, which is why I think nuance is an important part of this discussion. Will he play in structure perfectly every down? No, but neither do Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen. I think he may lean a bit more on the Josh Allen side of the spectrum, but it's certainly not a big enough concern for me to put it as his defining weakness. But I did want to talk about it first because I think that's what most people probably expect to hear. I'll demonstrate my point with a few plays on either side just to give you a general idea. For a good play in structure, here, Caleb quickly turns down his reads on the other side of the field, not finding anything good there, and he sees the tight end clear the linebacker level, so he just waits for the tight end to get past the ref, and he lobs this in beautifully in the intermediate field in between the linebackers and safeties. But on the opposite side, Caleb looks like he's looking at number one here, 
which he maybe turns down because of the safety, but you'd like him to maybe stick on this for an extra tick to see how the wide receiver adjusts his route and gets open. But that's also not really my qualm on this play, I just figured I'd point it out. It's more the fact that he just continues just casually working through his reads as the pocket collapses and after his check down ran wide open right past his face. You ideally want him to have his internal clock going saying get rid of this now and you want him to find his check down here, especially in open space. Instead he holds the ball too long and gets it stripped from him. And this is generally what a lot of his failures in structure look like just refusing to throw the ball to his open man to live to fight another down or pick up easy yards. It does seem like he's big play hunting too many times where he'll just hold onto the ball for far too long and try to create downfield rather than just taking easy yards. This observation is pretty easily confirmed by the tape, first of all, but also by looking at his average time to throw in 2023, which was 3.19 seconds, the fifth highest of 162 quarterbacks with at least 300 dropbacks. Holding onto the ball this long lends to more negative plays and sacks. Similar to Drake May, PFF has him charted as being responsible for 30% of the pressure he faces as a whole, which is first in the nation, four percentage points higher than Drake May, who has the second most. There are also a bit too many times on film for me personally where he turns down NFL level reads in the intermediate part of the field, like this one where the wide receiver is wide open here and he's staring right at him, but for some reason he moves off of him. But again, you still see plenty of times where he'll take the easy yards or just take the design play. My guess is that it has a lot to do with context as he starts to abandon structure a little too much when the game script starts to not go in his favor or when he's under pressure a lot, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, but it's also not a good thing either. As we've talked about, he has the ability to be amazing out of structure, but it can also lead to more negative plays which makes it harder to be efficient as an offense. I really think more than anything, it's an issue of maturity as he's still extremely young, rather than some innate inability to play in structure like some might have you believe. Even Pat Mahomes struggled initially once the league implemented the too high safety approach to try and stop him because he had such a hard time taking the easy throws and not waiting for the big play. But he got past it, and whether this is a weakness or not for Caleb really depends on whether he can get past it in the same way which is not something we could know as not being a part of an NFL team because we have no opportunity to meet him and we don't know how he deals with diversity. So whether you think Caleb Williams can play a structure or not kind of depends on how you want to see it. Me personally, I choose to see it in a way in which I think that he's shown enough that he's willing to take easy throws and he's willing to do the easy stuff if he feels like it. And I think he'll just want to feel like it more in the NFL as he matures more and works with NFL coaching. But I can't really blame you if you see it the other way. But in the same vein as working in structure, I think that Drake May definitely takes the cake as an anticipation thrower when compared with Caleb Williams. Caleb seems to be pretty inconsistent at throwing with anticipation, and even when he does, it's not with as much anticipation as I'd like to see, quite honestly. His tape gives me the feeling that he does a lot of looking and confirming whether a guy is open first, which seems to contradict what I said about his quick decision making, but I'll explain. When he's working within the structure of the offense and moving through his reads, he is a quick decision maker because he does a great job timely moving through his progressions and starting the processes of throwing the ball as soon as he sees an open wide receiver. What I'm talking about here is when receivers are not open and he's asked to read the leverage of his receiver and the defender's leverage. In these situations, he's not as confident or consistent pulling the trigger on the throw until he double checks the wide receiver's leverage to confirm that they'll be open. NFL reads often require the quarterback to throw the ball before the receiver is open, and there are times where I question his ability to do so. I think at times he can show really good anticipation on some of these throws to the boundary of the field when he's throwing like a back shoulder, but there are many times on his tape where I feel like he's just a tick too late on a throw because he's spending a bit too much time confirming what he sees instead of ripping it. His game is not to be a precision passer, and it'll never be like Tua's game, for example, where he beats teams with crazy anticipation and will just carve them up by having the ball to the receiver the second they get out of their break. But even if it's not the defining portion of their game, you still like to see it from a college quarterback, and I think that this can come by working with NFL coaching. And it's not particularly uncommon for very traitsy guys because when guys have less arm talent or physical traits, they're required to be way more strict with learning the game because they have such a small margin for error. Whereas guys with traits like this have a way larger margin for error, so they're typically not quite as precise as those guys, so it's not like this is really uncommon. Another somewhat concerning point for the beginning of his career is that he almost exclusively plays in shotgun. I can't really find a number of how many snaps he's taken under center, 
and I can only recall a few where there was like a quarterback sneak or a tush push or something. Other than that, he's always in shotgun. The reason this is concerning is because from day one, the playbook will be limited to only plays ran out of the shotgun as he learns the footwork and timing required of him to play under center. It doesn't seem like a huge difference and it's not something people would really think about, but it's going to take some time developing the muscle memory and can lead to some badly timed plays in the start of his career because he just doesn't get the footwork right or he just doesn't get the timing of the drop correct. And a lot of NFL concepts require precise timing. I don't see it as a big concern in the long term, it's really more of a short term problem. But the next thing we'll talk about is an actual full fledged weakness, which is being too loose with the football as a runner and careless with the ball in the air. As a runner, he has an extremely bad habit of holding the ball too far out from his body, which makes him an easy target for defenders and allows them to get their hands in to create fumbles. He already has an extremely low PFF fumbling grade, and I honestly think that he could have fumbled way more than he did, and he'll be punished for it at the start of his career, which will force him to learn how to carry the ball better. Because he carries the ball too far out from his body, and it just leads to too many opportunities for defenders to get their hands in and knock the ball away. He also has a tendency to be careless with the football at times. Not always, as I've seen him make some very smart throwaways and checkdowns, but he also will just throw in a really confounding throw at other times. Like, what are we doing here? Why are we throwing this? Same thing here. Although this is a completion here, and we've seen a lot more crossbody throws be completed recently in the NFL, I just can't stand behind this decision making on a play like this, because I honestly think this is probably an interception in the NFL. But what I want to discuss now is a weakness I don't see mentioned a lot, but it's one that I felt applied based on the film I have of him. I think his accuracy and ball placement are pretty inconsistent. Does he generally get the ball where it needs to go? Yes. But he can be prone to wild misses leading to interceptions, like this one where he attempts to float this into the tight end and just gives it right to the safety. Overall, I just wasn't as impressed with his ball placement as Drake Mays, as I don't think his ball placement as often maximizes yards after catch or creates as much separation for wide receivers at the catch point to make their catches easier. That's not to say he doesn't have some beautiful passes at times, because he definitely does, but I don't find that his ball placement is as consistent as I'd like to see. Same goes for accuracy, where he definitely could get too fancy at times and mess up throws, by sidearming it for no reason, or he'll simply just under or overthrow the ball randomly at times and miss big plays, which is something you'll see on every college quarterback's tape, of course, but it's worth mentioning because I think the consistency of his accuracy is below some of the other quarterbacks in this class. His last weakness is his size. At 6'1", Caleb is only at the 15th percentile for NFL quarterbacks, and his weight of 215 is 29th. I don't think there are durability issues by any means, but it does cause concerns for his ability to read over the middle of the field without rolling out to his sides, and you definitely see times on tape where he'll not throw the ball with a defensive lineman in front of him or when an offensive lineman crosses his path because he thinks the ball will get batted down or that it'll hit off the back of the offensive lineman. When players get taller, you generally expect these occurrences to happen much more. Another thing that I've noticed a lot too is that when he's under pressure, he tends to drop his hips a lot, which makes him even shorter, which makes it even harder for him to read the intermediate part of the field or even just read the field in general. I understand why he does it. It's like an attack stance and it allows him to easily just burst off his back foot and out of the pocket or up and away if he wants to. But for the time that he does it, he can sometimes miss big plays based on this and I don't think it would be as much of an issue if he were taller, but because he's 6'1", he's now dropping himself to Bryce Young's size, which just isn't necessary. But now it's time for the pro comp. Who's that Pokemon? Who's big as you? It's Clefairy! I originally didn't have a pro comp in here, but while editing this video, I watched two minute drills scouting report on Caleb Williams, and I loved their pro comp as soon as I heard it. So full disclosure, I completely stole this from them with their permission, of course. I highly recommend you check out their channel as it's one of my personal favorites and I'll leave a link to their Caleb Williams scouting report in the description. Anyways, Kyler Murray is a great pro comp for Caleb Williams because they both come from the same Lincoln Riley system, are both undersized, both excel at creating big plays with a combination of athleticism and arm strength, both can throw accurately from different arm slots, and can both operate well from the pocket even if they'll make some bad decisions at times, not target the middle of the field as much as you'd like, or have mechanical failures leading to inaccurate passes. I absolutely refuse to comp anyone to Patrick Mahomes, so this one sits well with me. But as good as Kyler Murray has been in the NFL, I think Caleb Williams has a higher floor in just about everything. Caleb's taller, he has more starting experience, and he strikes me as having a higher floor to become a better passer from the pocket than Kyler is at the moment. But now it's time for my final thoughts. I think a lot of his strengths speak for themselves, and I think the combination of them are what makes him so unique. 
A lot of the weaknesses section for this player is just nitpicking and pointing out inconsistencies of his game rather than telling you that Caleb Williams is incapable of doing something because he's really not. His height is maybe the only physical limit to his game, but other than that, he has the raw traits along with an above average processor to literally do anything on the football field, absolutely anything. But I ultimately think a lot of how you see Caleb Williams depends on how you choose to see him. You could choose to look at him painting his nails and say he's not man enough for football, or you could choose to say he's a unique person who's confident enough in himself and his abilities to just not care what people think. You could look at him crying to his mom after a loss and say he can't handle the ups and downs of an NFL season. Or you can say it paints him as someone who poured his heart and soul into his team and cares about winning more than anything. You can look at his bad plays and structure and say he just cares about throwing deep and making plays. He'll never run an NFL offense and he's a college quarterback just like Johnny Manziel. Or you can look at all his good plays and structure and fully disagree and say he's the next Tom Brady. Me personally, I think he's a generational talent who has a lot of flaws, but also has an incredible skill set. And a lot of the flaws in his game, in my opinion, are things he's shown he can do, but he just needs to do them more consistently. I've showed you the film, I've given you my opinion, and now it's time to hear from you. Tell me down below, what's your take on Caleb Williams? Did you have one coming into this video? Did this video change it? Do you believe more strongly in your take after seeing this? Still have no opinion? I'd love to hear. I'd also greatly appreciate a like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel and I'd love to grow this community of people so we can all talk ball together. But that's going to be the end of this one guys. Later.